this recliner is not comfortable and I don't know if it's because it's been used a lot or if it's the way it's made or what, but it's it's not super comfortable. And neither is my husband's recliner and his is a di completely different kind, but I don't know what the solution is. <laughs> I just don't know. Do you know I've seen on Timu, they have those those chairs. They're like lawn chairs. And they call them something. I don't know what they call them. But you can tilt them back up. And tilt them plumb up, and you could sleep in them like a recliner, and they, and you sit like in a recliner in them things, and they, they're comfortable. Oh, I can tell by looking at them, they're comfortable. But they don't have no. Well, you can order a pad separate to put on it. And of course, you pay extra for the padding, the chair pad. But otherwise, you won't have a chair pad. But. It's an outdoor furniture, but you could use it inside your house if you wanted to. Well, that was weird. I, the glass here just made a weird noise. Well, I don't know. But you dang sure can. You sit in them things and enjoy. Let me draw a picture right quick. You, you sit there in this chair and it's like this and you, you just, oh, you're just loving it. You're just loving it. It sits there like this. Hey, it's got it's got some kind of leg legging legs on it. Or some kind of legs. I don't know what kinds you'd call them. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they go, but it's got legs on it. And you can uh Yeah, I have been thinking about getting me, ordering me one of them chairs that my husband would get mad. But it might just be a lot more comfortable than this. Now, the only thing about these chairs is that the, the armrest is not real comfortable. It's hard. It's one of those hard armrest metal or hard plastic or something like that you know you know it's kind of like this see that chair <laughs> it's the only drawback is it won't have a padded uh, arms on it you might could uh, strap a, a pillow or something around the, the arms of it, strap it real tight on there. You might could do that and have padded that way. Yeah, you can probably could with your zip ties. Use large zip ties and put your, hey, your pillow, pillow around them, uh, those arms, and that makes them padded. There you go, we done, well, we, we solved that problem now, didn't we? We sure did.
God, there's so many things I want to order for Tamu. <laughs> oh, God, I, I try not to. I, I get stuff accumulated in my cart, and I have to go back and start uh, removing stuff, you know. I don't get nowhere near all the stuff I want, you know, of course. But <laughs> Shit, you'd have to be rich. And you'd have to have a big house to put all that stuff in, you know. Shit. You'd need a mansion just to warehouse all your stuff. <laughs> you'd have to have special shelves put in, just like us in a store or something. You know, that'd probably be practical to do it that way. <laughs> probably would. Oh, my leg. Oh, I gotta scratch that out. I quit. But, yeah. Hmm. Have you one room that's just just for your fabrics mainly? Your fabrics and your threads. Well, you know, I don't know. You'd have to get all that arranged somehow or other. I have one, two, three. I think it's three, unless I'm forgetting one. Sewing boxes full of sewing-related stuff, just stuff just crammed in there. And then I've got small containers, you know, with the plastic containers with the lids, and, uh, with other sewing notions and uh, pieces of lace and... Uh, elastic and just miscellaneous stuff like that and it's it's none of it's organized at all some of it's buried in the junk room I can't get to it I don't have my sewing room in my bedroom I don't have it organized I, I, I don't know how I can I don't know how I can get it organized I don't have the right kind of shelves for one thing The shelves that are in my, that one big shelves thing, it's in my room in the corner. That would be good to use for a blanket closet. You know, folding fold blankets up and putting them, and they make a good blanket closet. I should sure use it that way. But then where would I put the stuff that's in it? See? <laughs> I mean, everything is just a, just a disorganized mess. <laughs> a disorganized mess. <laughs> Well, anyway, what I'm doing is I'm making this here. I put two rows on it, and, I've, and now I've started a third row of single crochet. And what this is going to be for is for one to make one of them Christmas trees. You put uh, you put your uh, your beads in between, in between there like that. You see, you put your beads in there, and you you go back and forth like this, and you make a Christmas tree. And you put more beads in between. You see, that's what I'm gonna try to make here, and I. I think I might have made this thing too long because I was, I was paranoid about making it too short. So now that I've made it too long, I'm putting this an, another row and I might put as many as four rows on it. We'll see that. And then we'll, we'll see. 
And that gives me an idea. Drinking my cold chocolate milk and having vanilla wafers. You know, I don't hardly have any real friends. Now, a lady next door, Delma, she's a true friend. And uh, that lady that came to visit us from uh, Odessa the other day, she's a true friend. She's mainly Paul's friend. Well, she's a good lady. She's a good lady. And, uh, have been battling depression last few days and frustration and aggravation and some hurt and just various things you know Unhappy, unhappy things. Lately, if there just doesn't seem to be any kind of a answer to certain problems that, that I'm really tired of. You know? Really, you get sick and tired of things after a while, you know. Shit, we're only human. Anyway, <sighs> oh, did I show y'all? I put these on here. Ain't that neat to hear that? I like that. This tree here reminds me of a little Christmas tree I had for a while when I was a little girl. I don't know where in the world I got it. I don't know where it came from. But I had one and it was, it was about this size, just a little bit smaller, not much, just a little bit smaller than this. And it was, uh, it had the, it wasn't crocheted, it was uh, well, let me get that. It was this kind of stuff it was made of, well, and it had all kinds of decorations and stuff on it, and, and I just thought that was the neatest thing. 
And then there was this girl who was new to Texas. Her and her family had moved from up north somewhere. She was new to Texas and had moved out there in that neighborhood, High Chaparral. And uh, she wasn't a real honest girl. She did sneaky things. We'd be playing a game and she'd cheat. And she just did sneaky things that were just awful sometimes. Like she thought I wouldn't know what what she did. Of course I knew what she did. And, uh, you know. But what was I going to, what was I going to tell you about her? Why did I bring it up? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Well, see, after school, we'd walk home. She didn't ride a bus either. I don't know why. It's it, that, but uh, we'd walk. We'd walk home together. And sometimes she'd go on to her house, and sometimes she'd come over to my house. Sometimes we'd both just go to her house. And once in a blue moon, I'd go over to her house. But I didn't go and stay for very long because my daddy had always drilled it into my head. You get up, when school lets out, you go right straight home. You don't go nowhere else and stay there at the house. Of course, your dad wanted us to be sure and do that for our own safety. Because we didn't have a mother at home. We went home from school, there wasn't nobody there. And, uh, he just wanted us to be safe, you know. So, you know, that's what we did. It was automatic to me to just go straight home after school. It was just automatic. That was just part of life. And anyway, well, one day I went over to her house after school. And lo and behold, there was my Christmas tree sitting right there on their coffee table. I said, well, there's my Christmas tree. You stole it from me. I said, no, yes, you did. That's mine. And her mom was in there. I don't remember what all she said. I said, well, I'm taking that home. And I did. I took it home. But she did stuff like that, and I, and I didn't speak to her after that. I was I wasn't speaking to her, um, and so if she got me to go over to her house another time to play cards or something, she was cheating. And I complained to her mother. I said, she's cheating. Her mom didn't really do anything about it. But I quit playing with her. I didn't put up with it. I just told her, I'm cheap. I ain't playing with you no more. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Somebody cheats. It ruins the game. I don't know what's the point of playing the game. If you're going to cheat, there's no point. You just sit there and look at it, not ever even touch it, and say, I declare that I won, and, and never even play the game. Shit. Playing the game is the fun of it. And you don't know if you're going to win or lose. Each time, that's part of the fun of it. <laughs> I've always loved playing board games, card games, and all kind of games and stuff like that. I loved it. We had that twister game, and 
which, you know, it was all right. It wasn't my favorite, but we had that, and we had uh, Don't Spill the Beans, and we had Hands Down, and we had Monopoly, we had Chinese Checkers, we had Wahoo, which was one of my favorites, and we had Big Jack Checkers, each checker was about this big around, and big old thing. <laughs> and, uh, we had pickup sticks. We had anything else. We had cards. We had dominoes. I don't know, but I need to get this finished. I think I wasted enough y'all's <laughs> time. That's something. I'm, all, I'm always wasting y'all's time. <laughs> I just got an idea for sewing. Cause you know how tedious it is pinning your fabrics together. And everything's gotta go together just right, you know, all the edges. 
Well, what if a person just took some tape, some scotch tape, and, and just, uh, like this, say, this right here, say, and taped them edges together now and then about ever so far apart, you know, put a piece of tape and you can pull that off. That ain't no big deal. It can't be that bad. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it because I got those Christmas tree pieces cut out has been laying in there on the sewing table for at least a week, if not longer, that I need to get sewed up. And I've been putting it off because it's a pain in the butt, pinning all those branches. Because you got all those branches going shh, 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 shh. You know, and on the other side, shh, You gotta pin all that shit together, and there's three, three of them that has to be pinned. There's six pieces. You pin these two together, then you pin these two together, and you pin these two together, so you'll have three pieces. And then you sew those three pieces together, just one straight line down the middle, and then there's a gap in them that you left at the bottom where you stuff them with the stuffings. It ain't hard. I've never made this tree before, but it's not something that would be hard. I've made other stuffed things before, so, you know, I have an idea of it. We go into this and see what we've got. Ow. Look how it's curling. Now here it is with three rows compared to three rows compared to two rows. It's hard to see, ain't it? Well, shoot. Anyway. I'm going to stop after three rows because, you know, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm working on an idea. <laughs> Set that over there, right? I'm on, I gotta get my pen and write, draw a picture of my idea. Get that out of the way. Draw a picture of my idea. What was it? Oh God, what was it? It was a genius idea. What was it? I don't want to forget it. Crochet this rectangle. Right. 
Ayan. Beige. Like a Christmas tree. Christmas tree. There, I got that wrote down on there so I know why I wrote and put that on there. Now, let me use a little diagram of this little Christmas tree here. I see you've got these uh, it's like a, somehow or other you fold it and you make that little you make this Christmas tree right here with the big beads Let me ask you something. <laughs> Let's see if you can figure this out. What if you were somebody else? Different person in, entirely. Born in another part, part of the world, just lived a different life, everything. A completely different person. Then one day you came along and you met you. You met somebody that was you, the you that you that you actually are right now. But supposing you're this other person and you came along and met yourself as you are now, what would you think? That's your assignment. I want you to write, uh, uh, write what do they call that, a short essay on that for your homework tonight. And you bring that to me. Y'all bring that to me tomorrow. And uh, I might read some out loud to the class. Or, or we'll just see. Now, y'all just write a one-page essay on what you think about it. You bring that to school tomorrow. Oh. I might be losing my marbles. Let me get this in here. I'm getting to the end now. Is there anybody else out there who ever gets, you know, 
bummed out and uh, aggravated and fed up, disgusted and hurt. I'm just generally, generally tired of it all. You ever, anybody else out there ever feel that way? And uh, well, especially the older you get, and the more you know that everything's the same. Just same old, same old, really, pretty much. And um, hey, you know, you don't have anything to look forward to but because you're getting old and. You're gonna, you're gonna die. You're gonna, you're gonna kick the bucket. You're gonna croak out like a bullfrog. <laughs> <clears throat> you're gonna buy the farm. <laughs> you're gonna push up daisies. <laughs> Shit. You're going to fertilize the graveyard. <laughs> Shit. I think last night I had the weirdest of all the weird dreams I've ever had. I was in a completely different world that I'd never seen before. had experiences I never had before. It was very strange. I don't know if it's going to work out or not. Well, if I have to, I might have to get that green crafter's wire and put in and make it stiff. If I have to, but I, I, this is not supposed to turn into something that's supposed to be make me miserable. You're not supposed to have to be miserable. Yep. She jumped off that chair and knocked her dog food out on the floor everywhere. You see, we have a problem. <laughs> you see, we have one hell of a problem. <sighs> Let me cut this thread off right here. And I'll tell you what one hell of a problem is. One hell of a problem. Ever since we got Lily, uh, Mila has been bullying on her, and she's still doing it after all this time. And so the only place that Lily can eat is up in Paul's. <laughs> and my husband's <laughs>
I have to tell she spills it. And then uh, after a while, she'll, she'll sneak around behind the, the, these tables and behind the chairs, and she'll sneak around there and as quietly as she can, she'll eat that dog food from off the floor. If Mila hears you chewing on that food, she'll run around there and <laughs> chew. She just, she just got her mind made up to be mean to Lily. <laughs> and I keep thinking, you know, one of these days Lily's going to get enough of it. And she'll start defending herself, but so far she hasn't. Crazy, silly things. Crazy, silly things. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> it cracked me up. <laughs> Animals are a trip. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm, just, I'm just weaving this in here so I can get it out of the way and we won't have to look at it. Uh, go along in here and run it up underneath there and that's plenty far enough right there that's plenty now uh, cut this off right there that's uh, one end of it now this end of it. And I'm dropping it over there, damn it. God, shit, I'm gonna have to use this thing here, it just refuses to go on to the damn yarn needle, it's just being an asshole, <laughs> you know what I mean, there, got it on there, shit. Now, please forgive me for being human. <laughs> I'll try to forgive you too. How about that? Let's try to forgive each other for being human. My heart goes out to that little kitten out there. I don't know if I if I told y'all or not, but his mama weaned him at a real early age, and it wasn't that long ago, and she's already big pregnant again. Tortoise. She is big pregnant already. It looks like she's got a whole bunch of kittens in there. Oh. She must like having kittens. <laughs> That's all I know to say about it. She must like it because she has devoted her life to it. Yeah. 
and I, and uh, it ain't no tragedy either, and I'll tell you why, because God commanded and all the animals and people both go forth out of all, all over the earth and multiply. And that's what she's doing. She's a multiply. She's obeying the Lord. She's a good Christian cat. <laughs> yes, she is. And nope, I am not going to set a trap. And I am not going to take her to some place to get her neutered. Can't afford it to start with. I just ain't going to do it. Because there are 50,000 other stray cats in this town that's doing the same thing. They're multiplying. Yeah, yeah. That's what God said for them to do. And I know terrible things happen to them, but you know what? Terrible things have been happening to animals since Adam and Eve. <laughs> terrible things have been happening to us, to all the whole animal kingdom. Ever since Adam and Eve fell from grace, well, that was it. So, You know what I'd like to do, but I can't afford it. Don't have the time, don't have the energy. Is to go to a Hobby Lobby or Michael's either one. Michael's either one. Just listen. Look up and down their arts and crafts aisles just to see what's new. I haven't done that in a long, long time. I bet there's a lot of stuff that I've forgotten about, and there's a lot of stuff that's new that I haven't seen yet. I'd, I'd, I'd like to just check it out. I can't be on my feet like that like I used to. I would need to be in a dadgum wheelchair, literally. <laughs> to hold up to it. And, and sometimes you can get lucky when you go into Hobby Lobby. There there will be a, a wheelchair in there for customers. But a lot of times you go in there and there ain't one. They need to have more than one or two if that's all they have. They need to get more in there because there's a lot of us older women that go to places like Hobby Lobby and we need a wheelchair. Well, you know, we don't, we don't need one that we have to drag it around all the way from our house because we don't use it at home. We wouldn't need it at home, but to walk around up and down the aisles for two, three, four hours looking and, ooh, wow, look at this, look at that. Looking at all that stuff. You, you can't be on your feet like that. And on them concrete floors, no. You need a wheelchair, a customer's wheelchair. That's what we need. I'm just saying, okay. Now I've got to figure out how I'm going to put this together. I've got this made, and I've got a few of these. I lost some, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday I lost some. Some got spilled on the floor. I, they rolled under, I think some rolled under the couch over there. And that couch is heavy and hard to move. And it, it's, one, it's one of them couches that sits real low to the floor. You, you might could get a yardstick underneath there. 
but nothing bigger than a thicker than a yardstick like that you couldn't put underneath that couch. Shoot. It's inconvenient to, to make couches where they sit so low to the floor that you can't get under them. You can't get under them to clean the floor under them or to get something that rolls under them or something like that. It's just inconvenient. It's just not logical. Now, now what I was wanting to do, oh yeah, I'm going to get these other ones right here. Now I'm thinking these might be too small since I made it this wide. Yeah, that might be all right. I've got three, four, four of them. Now I don't know how hard this might end up being. It's, it's weird. I don't have any beads. Any big beads to speak of, really. I've got lots of little bitty beads, but I need big ones. Where are all my beads? Where are all my beads? I think they're put up. There's some beads I have that are put up when I put up all my resin stuff, I put those beads up with it. Man, why did I do that? Well, here's one of these. Got some stuff dropped on the floor. I've got these green ones that are this big. But, uh, like that. But this, see, is the bead I'm going to use. I'm going to use. Listen, these ones, and I only have four of them. God, I need more than four. I think I'm going to need more than four. Yeah, I am. Shoot. Now, what am I going to use for string? String. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta have some kind of string. Let's see. I've got a ribbon. <clears throat> now I suppose I could use ribbon. some skinny ribbon right here There's some skinny rib skinny red ribbon and could I could run that through it I sure could no reason why not and um that's for. Yeah. Oh, this would be neat. Put this behind an angel's head, like a halo. Yeah. I want to 
wish I had a friend here. You know who I wish was here with me right now? To do crafts with me? Is <clears throat> Lisa. Lisa Sutton. Lisa, if you see this video, I miss you. And I think about you sometimes. And I wish you didn't have to move away. And I wish you was here to do crafts with me. We would just, just sit and do all, whatever kind of crafts you want to. <clears throat> Let me compare this red with that. Would it look? I guess it'd look all right. I don't see why not, I guess. And I've got a, I've got that green too, and I've got a lighter green. It's lighter than the, than the strip on here, and it looks good. I like it with this. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this green on here. That, that this is my decision right here. I'm gonna use this green right here to pull through it now i'm not sure how to do the top but i know i'll have to leave some kind of a loop I do not feel very confident about this. I do not feel very confident about this. God, it's a lot harder than it looks. I'm telling you, it's a lot harder to do this than it looks. And it looks like the bottom is too big. I'm going to try making the bottom just a little bit. not too much okay there it is that's as good as I'm gonna get it right there and I'm scared to death I'm gonna accidentally it's gonna accidentally pop loose and I ain't gonna be able to get it back like it was and I need my hands to thread this this Gonna do this. I need some way to hold this. Oh, I've got this, but it's too short. The mouth is too short and it's too powerful. Oh. 
Maybe that'll help hold it for a few minutes till I can get something run up in there to uh, hold it tight. <laughs> God, I'm not sure what to do next. see where did I put that well, where did I put them where did I put those beads I just had or those bangles here they are <laughs> these bangles at the top. Did you know? Oh, God. Oh. That's not going to work. It, it don't have a hole in it like those do. I need something with a hole in it like that. Beach. And I got the bright idea I could run a needle and thread right through these styrofoam balls and maybe use these in between. this size without having to take the time to paint them. I'm going to need one. I'm going to listen. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, God. <sighs> that means I'll have to paint four more balls. And I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this. With this. use this to, yeah that's what I want to use this for but I can't do that until I paint those four more balls oh my god do you know how long this is going to take oh my god oh might as well turn this video off because it's getting long you know I'll talk to y'all later and let you know what I've gotten done.